Are we choosing to lose the next war? As provocative as that question sounds to many of you, uh, kind of being serious here. You know, the United States and many of our allies appear to be sleepwalking on military and technological innovations that could keep us in the fight and competitive against one of the powers like China and to a lesser extent Russia. Fair warning here, this video is kind of ruffle a lot of feathers and uh, it's kind of meant to. You know, innovation in newer technologies and strategies is going to keep countries like the United States relevant in the context of an ascending China. Put this into perspective here. The Chinese pour money and people into STEM-related projects, science, technology, engineering, and math, like their country's futures depend on it, because it does. China graduated 3.57 million STEM graduates in 2020, and this is paying off for the Chinese. They're producing technologies and even weapons that could in time, compete with the stuff America produces. Meanwhile, the United States only had 4 million students graduate college, which, man, that sounds great, right? Until you realize that only uh, 413,000 were STEM majors. And, uh, you know, while humanities are important, I like art, music, and dance, the Jets couldn't defend their own turf with dance. While internet sleuths like to point out that diploma mills in China are a thing, to the point where even Hong Kong is fighting fake qualifications, uh, not all of those uh, 3.57 million STEM students will be bad, right? With a cohort that large, there's bound to be some people who have good ideas. And it's hard to ignore the fact that China is accomplishing a lot with its heavy investment in AI, military tech, and manufacturing. This investment could have serious consequences during wartime. In the event of a war, many of the People's Liberation Army Navy ships that are sunk could be remanufactured. China could arm itself despite losing a large number of ships and personnel. In the U.S., we can barely manufacture submarines and aircraft carriers and destroyers on a suitable timeline. If you don't believe me, check out these numerous reports made to Congress in the last few years. I think it was Stalin who once said that a uh, quantity has a quality all of its own, and China is kind of proving that. But quality, if done right, can outweigh China's spam the environment mentality that we see today. And to do that, we can't sit on our hands. And if the idea of this makes you want to stress eat, that's why I use Lumen. I just finished my morning workout, so I'm going to check my Lumen to see what I can eat for breakfast, whether it's bacon and eggs or Cheerios and granola. Inhale so. through your Lumen. Exhale in three, two, one. Okay, so I am at a, <laughs> I'm at a one. This means that I'm burning mostly fat, so if I want to eat a carb-heavy breakfast like Cheerios and granola, I can do that. I am 49. Even though I run and lift weights, I still struggle with my weight. I've been using Lumen since February of this year. I've gone from 232 pounds to 222 pounds, and I'm maintaining. It's the world's first handheld metabolic coach. In just one breath in the morning, Lumen can measure your metabolism. Look, Lumen's biofeedback gives you control over your body again. It's not a magic bullet. You still gotta put in the work. But you know, honestly, Lumen has worked for me. So take the next step to a fitter, healthier version of you. Go to lumen.me slash Macbeth or click the link below, hit the QR code somewhere up there. You'll get 10% off your Lumen. Back to the video. According to a recent research report by Morgan Stanley, a Chinese investment and government support in AI have exploded in recent years. Uh, you know, my book, The Wind Machine, available on Amazon and Audible if you're a Marine, is about just this AI war, this AI dominance. And you know, Morgan Stanley shows that by 2030, China's AI industry and related sectors could be worth $1.4 trillion. Uh, Megan Tobin of the New York Times writes, to concentrate the country's engineering talent, the Chinese government also financed a network of labs where much of its most advanced AI research takes place, often in collaboration with big com tech companies like Alibaba and ByteDance. And when you think about it here, China has access to the entire population of their country for AI training data and theoretically access to government data 
on biometrics or behavior, stuff that would be politically sensitive in the West. Meanwhile, the U.S. has attempted to restrict these technologies, like AI chips sold to China, uh, and these efforts have been largely unsuccessful in slowing or blocking Chinese development in AI. Some reports have indicated indigenous Chinese developers have found ways around American embargoes. Much of these breakthroughs include developing the necessary hardware and software domestically instead of relying on this like fickle foreign market. In some cases, Chinese companies have found ways to rent and even physically move servers with much needed hardware into China. Chinese chip smuggling has also become a growing concern for American policymakers and national defense experts. Uh, Grunwald and Fist, writing for the Center for a New American Security, found that one smuggler reportedly handed an order for servers containing 2,400 NVIDIA H100s worth $120 million to a customer in the People's Republic of China. However, the floodgates are likely to break with a warmer response from the U.S. government concerning AI chips. On Monday, July 14th, 2025, the Trump administration loosened AI chip embargoes to China, allowing NVIDIA to sell directly to Chinese customers. This thaw in U.S. embargoes to China could have some serious consequences. I would argue that China is approaching capabilities nearing American and Western AI development. While the U.S. and elsewhere might be leading for now, this is unlikely to continue in the future. The Trump administration's decision to loosen restrictions may not itself lead to China's dominance in AI. Instead, Chinese dominance in AI is likely to occur due to the amount of Chinese money and personnel, STEM students, materiel that is going into this sector. And it doesn't stop there. America is losing its ability to attract top talent. Much of it is being swept away for a number of reasons. These reasons include a dysfunctional immigration system, lack of real investment in research universities, research facilities, lack of money, and benefits being tossed around to attract top talent. During the Cold War, the U.S. and the Soviet Union each developed their own flavors of computer automation. Uh, some people call it cybernetics, but today that kind of sounds weird. The field of computer automation, namely semiconductors for military systems, was pivotal to the development of personal computers. Networking, this little thing called the internet. Computer automation inspired national networks in countries like uh, Allende's Chile, where Allende kind of hoped to transform Chile into this socialist paradise by using a computer network called uh, Project Cybersyn for the manufacture and distribution of goods. Uh, reality was a harsher mistress here with a U.S. backed coup in 1973. Sorry. Now, during the Cold War, national networks were devised separately in the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Uh, the Soviets attempted the OGAS system in the 1960s, but they were unfocused, and they, they had these paranoid different divisions of uh, the Soviet Union fighting each other for control of this national computer network, so that kind of failed. In the U.S., this project came to fruition through a combination of private and public partnerships and, more importantly, a good deal of government money, information sharing, uh, technology transfers, and this, this firm vision set by the government and private researchers to, uh, to usher in this national network into existence. Well, originally small, this national network's technology was released to the public for use in the 1990s. The Internet. You know, uh, for most of its history, the Internet has served as an economic engine and an engine for economic information sharing and collaboration. Note that the Internet wasn't the first such attempt in the West. Uh, the French had this successful network called Mintel, which featured standardized terminals and this whole online connected uh, culture that's kind of reminiscent of the Internet today. AI promises to be a mover and a shaker in the coming years and decades. As an industry, it will account for trillions of dollars in public policy, military, and educational circles. AI is likely to be a profound paradigm for shifting the way people do things, just as the Internet was. You know, our lackadaisical attempts in AI are going to doom our ability to counter the Chinese economically and militarily. And this isn't the only sector where we're losing ground in the next war. Then uh, this one's near and dear to my heart. I want to talk about drones and electronic warfare. 
The Russian war in Ukraine has shown that airspace and control over exploitation in this space has become imperative for wartime success. Ukraine has offered other lessons too. Drone warfare has shown a need to build a more resilient drone warfare doctrine. More importantly, tougher anti-drone defenses. The U.S. military, while alarmed by international events, has been kind of slow when it comes to developing the infrastructure and institutional mindset for drone warfare future. I mean, even something as simple as drone motors just can't be constructed at scale within the U.S. To complicate matters, electronic warfare uh, associated with the drone and air war in Ukraine has become immensely more serious in wartime endeavors. This, so the viewer of mine who watched my videos on drone use in Ukraine offered some considerations uh, that I failed to address in earlier videos. Electronic warfare is no longer for big, expensive platforms. Instead, technologies like CRPAs or controlled reception pattern antennas are going to be needed at all levels of the combat environment. Uh, every drone, every plane, every vehicle, every ship in future conflicts is going to be an electronic warfare platform. In their current state, American CRPAs have been expensive and they've seen slow adaptation. In the Russian war in Ukraine, CRPAs are becoming infinitely cheaper and more ubiquitous in the combat environment. And Russia's government is pushing for inexpensive and deployable CRPAs. And the Chinese are taking notes on this one. It is no secret that China is preparing for the next war, and so are all of our other adversaries. So why are we choosing to lose the next war? You know, a lot of this comes down to American politics, priorities, and an inability to imagine what comes next in military conflicts. And, you know, a lot of this is eerily reminiscent of America thinking that following the Second World War, American political and military might would be fought with nuclear bombers instead of land armies. And then Korea happened, right? Americans initially found it really difficult to counter Chinese and Korean forces using newer Soviet military technology. Americans used aged weapons, especially in anti-tank platforms. Initially, the U.S. suffered horrific losses that could have been avoided. We can't make the same mistake with our adversaries today. We need to be innovative. We need to think of these situations that may seem impossible. Who would have thought in 2016 that Ukraine would mount a defense against Russia, like the most powerful regional military in Europe? You know, uh, I don't know the right pathways moving forward, but I do know that we need to have a tough conversation concerning America and our allies kind of falling behind the educational eight ball and the manufacturing eight ball here. Yes, this, this table has two eight balls. If we continue to choose to lose the war in these two critical areas, we won't be able to resist China and other adversaries politically and economically. And this is no longer academic. I mean, this is a problem right now. It is imperative that we start thinking and acting differently, understanding that we don't have to be behind. We can lead. We can continue to be innovative and ensure our cutting edge. Hey, if you want to support the channel, grab my Intel Life t-shirt from Bunker Branding. And thank you so much for watching. Wow, this girl from Watertown sure is cool. Hey kid, what's going on? Think Tank! You know, a girl from Watertown is kind of like riding a moped. It's lots of fun till your friends see you on one. What's really cool is a t-shirt or hoodie from Bunker Branding. Wow! Intel Life! Control C, Control V! That's exactly what we do! And Bunker Branding has all sorts of cool gear! Intel Life, Air Assault, Live Laugh Launch for Destroyer, Trident, High Mars, and Patriot. Think outside the bomb, Drone Sweet Drone, Department of the Boat People, Landmines, and even the Tow Missile. It would behoove you to grab one today! Girls from Watertown aren't cool, so wear your Bunker Branding gear! Now I know! And knowing's half the bell. Hey babe. You want to dance? Bunker